I've been doing combat robotics for about two years now and made a, a lot of dumb preventable mistakes. And I've even seen other people make similar or the same mistake. And so I decided to make a video so you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. I'm Tyler of Team Crypto Robotics and today I'm going to go over some things that I wish I knew before making my first robot and before getting into combat robotics. That way you know from my mistakes and the mistakes of others because I know I'm not alone in a lot of these. The first thing I wish I knew is how many fights are decided just because one robot got stuck in a weird position or how it's colloquially known does the thing. When a robot is doing it the thing, it means that it's stuck in a position where its wheels aren't touching the ground and its weapon isn't able to move it and just sort of stuck there. A lot of robots have a position, that one position where they get stuck. You'd be surprised how many fights are decided this way. I've had, I've won plenty of fights and lost plenty of fights because my robot or the robot that's fighting gets stuck. The most obvious way that people end up building the robot to avoid is, oh, I get up upside down and my robot's invertible. But then what ends up happening is, oh, you have wheel guards, but you end up getting stuck between the wall. With Bigfoot, it happened twice in one event where my forks were up on the wall. The back of the robot was touching the ground. The wheels weren't, a weren't able to touch the ground. And pretty much the best way to prevent that, other than like keeping that in mind when you're designing in CAD or whatever, is to also, once you have your robot assembled, just test it, see what weird positions it can get stuck in and not just upside down and like on a flat surface. How can it get stuck on a wall? How can it get stuck on kick plates? You'd be surprised just your robot not doing the thing as much can win you more fights. The second thing sort of piggybacks off the first thing and that the second thing I wish I knew was to limit the rotation on my forks. If they can rotate too far downward, that's a pretty good way to end up high centering your robot. Um, it happened in a fight against Weird Flex, and ever since then, I limited the rotation of my forks. If you have hinged forks, they should only be rotating as much as they need to. And if they rotate upward too much, you'll get what happened in the fight that I had against Undervolt, where his forks ended up going all the way up on his robot and so they're basically not doing anything. I think the first time you end up designing forks, you don't really think about the fact that of them moving way further than they're supposed to, I guess, unless you're told to think about that. And another thing that happens almost just as often as them getting high centering a robot or going all the way up top on the robot is that they seem like, because most ant weight and beetle weight robots are TPU, it may seem like it's constrained and you can rotate it, but if you push it far enough, then it ends up getting completely stuck in one direction, whether that be completely up or completely down. So if you are making hinged forks, limit how much they can rotate. And once you have everything made, test them and see, hey, if I push this a little further in this direction, will it end up getting stuck there? And odds are, if you can do it relatively easily, if you can push past that like stop to make it stuck upward or stuck downward, you should probably change something about your forks or the front of your robot. This third thing may just be me. I know there's gotta be other people that are in a similar boat, but you probably don't need quite as many spares as you think you need, depending on who you are. I mean, cause I've gone in events with one chassis, but, and then that's been fine for the whole event. Um, I t always go to events with like two fully completed robots and like a bunch of other spares. I've lost more spares to me making revision changes than I have to damage. Like I have a box full of useless parts and it's because I changed the robot too much and those are obsolete, not because they took damage. I think it's especially easy when you're 3D printing parts to print off way more stairs bears than you need comment down below if you also feel if i'm not the only one because i i feel like i'm the only one that has way more i mean i know i'm not the only one that has way more spares but i feel like i always expect to take way more damage than i do i like bring spares as if i'm gonna lose the entire chassis in every single fight and even when i lose it's typically like oh i lost like one or two parts some of this kind of comes with you knowing your robot in general because i know like as i 
work on more robots. There's certain things I need more of than others. Um, I have two chassis just so I can have two full copies of the robot to work on. I think wheels get chewed up a lot quicker than other things. Forks, especially if you're 3D printing forks or if you have really thin geometry on those forks, those end up being swapped out a lot. And certain armor pieces get broken off before other things. This next one is definitely a product of coming from combat robotics after watching BattleBots. And that is how much of a hazard having wood floors can be, especially as the day goes on and there's tons of gashes in them. Because when you're watching BattleBots, you don't think much of it because the floors are steel and it really takes a lot to destroy those floors. Although some events in the US do have steel floors, all but one of the ones I've been to had wood floors. But whether you have sh forks that are too sharp and too hinged and end up getting stuck in the gashes on the floor, or you have a hammer saw and you end up missing and getting stuck in the floor. I don't have a hammer saw, so it hasn't happened to me, but I've had my opponent do that several times. And it has literally won me a fight because the, my opponent was a little too trigger happy on their hammer saw and got stuck in the ground twice. I've also seen a couple scalers get stuck in either the walls, if they're, it was a wooden wall to be fair, or uh, the wooden floors. It happened twice in one event. One wasn't a scaler though, I think it, but I think it was a scaler weapon. I know at finals, I was afraid to run metal forks after the second fight because the floor got beat up so much. And I didn't really have good TPU forks then, and that, that was played into a big role on how finals went for me last year. That fight, that second fight against Killjoy, I got stuck in the floor once, and then I had to get unstuck, and I was like driving differently that whole fight after that. And then right before the timer, I got stuck in the floor. So I got saved by the bell essentially, and ended up getting the judge's decision. But that's a perfect example of the, those wood floors being a bigger hazard than my opponent in that case. This one is less about building a robot and the design of it, or even the fights themselves. I wish I would have known that, especially going into my first event, that robots on RCE, and I haven't used Builder ZB much, but I imagine it might be this much the same, is that robots that are signed up for events drop out all of the time like there's usually always a couple robots that drop out last minute because people sign up with robots that aren't made yet and the story behind this is going into my first event which was bot supremacy over in Mich over in michigan they had ant weights and fairy weights and i originally was planning on building an ant weight but i had like n20s and a, a 2s battery and some servos but i didn't know any better so I like bought those electronics planning to build an ant weight, but then I saw that the ants were like, like they were like barely filled up. There was actually no, like almost no robots on the waiting list for the ants, but there's open slots in the fairy weights. So I threw together a fairy weight instead, but luckily I was, it wasn't too hard because N20s are actually better for fairy weights than ants. And I had some small servos that I could like put in there instead of the standard servos that I would, was planning to use in an ant version of Bigfoot. And that's why little Bigfoot is a fairy and why I didn't just start out with Bigfoot as a regular ant is because it was, the slots were filled up for the sign up for that event for ants. And I thought, oh, I, I can't, I can't just show up in there when the slots are full. And I, if I would have made an ant weight version of Bigfoot and brought it, then I could have fought it because enough people dropped out, plenty of people dropped out or sometimes they just don't end up, sh or they don't show up that day. So even if it is full when you, sh even though it's full when you're driving there and showing up, it's like when you, by the time you get there, there's an open slot. And some events will try to work you in, but I wouldn't necessarily count on that. Also, it's a friendly reminder that if you do sign up a robot for an event and you know you that robot's not gonna make, make it there, I'd recommend for the sake of the event organizer and anybody that's on the waiting list to drop your robot out of it as soon as you know you're not going to make it, just to make everybody easier for everyone else to plan. This next one may have exceptions, especially with smaller robots like fairies. I had to learn the hard way, and I wish I would have known this from the beginning, is that press fit kind of sucks for anything that's like an ant weight robot or larger. For Bigfoot specifically, the wheels were press fit for the longest time, and I didn't use con some adhesive to keep the wheels on, and even still the wheels would fall off for no reason because those were just 3D printed press fit onto a three millimeter D shaft. And it 
worked mostly, but definitely not advisable. For finals last year, I, since I didn't have any more servo horns, I tried 3D printing some that were press fit, and it just straight up didn't work when there was any amount of like force onto them. I've tried 3D printing gears that were press fit. For the first version of Hodag, I tried to press fit the wheels on there. It just straight up didn't work at all. I don't know why I thought that would work on a Beetle 8 when it barely worked on an Ant. I mean, I imagine for fairies you could definitely get away with it. But if you're going to any sort of motor and you're 3D printing something, do not try to press fit it. Instead of using press fit, you should use something like a set screw a hub or some sort of like collar situation where you like tighten the bolt and it squeezes around it i've also heard of people slotting their their shafts i've uh specifically like the servo horn they like shave two sides of it and make it a slot instead of the normal gear that it has because those teeth are really small i'm sure people are going to comment down below exceptions to this rule the last thing i wish i knew with pla plus and tpu is pretty much all you need specifically for 3D printed parts and in ant weight and smaller robots. When I first got into combat robotics and I knew that TPU was good, so I made as much of Bigfoot out of TPU as I could, but there's still some rigid parts. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to 3D print it out of something else and printed stuff out of different types of nylon. I printed out of polycarbonate. And then I eventually realized that PLA plus is pretty much good enough for a lot of the rigid parts. The most recent version pretty much is just, as far as 3D printed parts go, it's either PLA plus or TPU. And I realized if I need something that's stronger than that PLA plus, and honestly PLA plus has a higher impact resistance than a lot of filaments that are a lot harder to print, a lot more expensive. And so, you know, like your hardened nozzles, your enclosures, your high temperatures and your glue sticks that you need. I was so wrapped up in finding the right material and getting all the fancy stuff to print it. But PLA plus ends up working just as good, if not better for usually cheaper. And obviously the rest is TPU. And if I want anything that has stronger than that PLA plus, I end up getting it machined, whether that be out of UHMW, like the weapon assembly on Hodag, the carbon fiber top plates that Hodag uses, I, and I'm probably going to switch to carbon fiber for the bottom. I used all, some aluminum parts for on Hodag, and on Bigfoot I have titanium top plates on the new version, obviously your AR-500 forks and stuff, and titanium armor for stuff. And I, I, I still am probably going to explore some new filaments, but I'm not going to be as caught up with it currently. You, if you get PLA Plus, which the brands everyone recommends is Overture Super PLA Plus, the Duramic, and Polymaker and Polymax PLA Plus. Uh, if you're making a plastic ant, that'll be your go-to filament. But yeah, if you're making 3D printing a bot, it, you can basically be PLA Plus and TPU. And if you feel you need a, a more stronger material that's rigid, then you probably should be looking at UHMW, carbon fiber, or some sort of metal. Because I feel like you're going to get diminishing returns. That, maybe this, that's a controversial opinion, because I know a lot of people still print their a lot of parts out of nylon. I'm not convinced it's worth it. I mean, especially if you're starting out, then the extra effort to try to print something out of nylon is probably not worth it. And with all that said, if you made it this far into the video, be sure to comment down below what you wish you knew when you were building your first robot and gotten into combat robotics, especially if you had to learn it the hard way. I know I showed some clips from of Bigfoot from events that I haven't covered yet on this channel. So, and I am working on a video on that one. That should be the next video that I come out with and be sure to subscribe so you can grab that. And if you're looking for something else to watch, here is the video on the build of my Beetleweight Hodag.